Hello again. Welcome to Gimbal Bay Church's vlog. We're still in the 40 chapters of growth in the Bible. And today we're in Exodus chapter 14, if you want to catch up with us. And our study today is headed, When Life Seems Out to Get You. I wonder if you're going through a challenging time in your life just now. You thought, at last, you know, everything, the, the difficult time I've been going through, it's settling down. It's everything starting to go well. Then suddenly you find you're facing an even bigger challenge. This is where we catch up with Moses and the Israelites. He's led them out of slavery in Egypt, and they'd probably realised it wouldn't be an easy journey to the promised land, but at least they were free. Then panic and doubt hits them. Pharaoh and his chariots were coming after them. You will have heard the saying, between a rock and a hard place, and they were, the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh and his army behind them. As Pharaoh got nearer, in verse 10, we read the Israelites were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. If you forget most of this story in Exodus chapter 14, Remember Moses' words in verse 13. Whenever you're going through a difficult time, hang on to these words. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that the Lord will bring today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. You may remember that 400 years before this account, there'd been a famine in Israel. Joseph was already in Egypt and in a prominent position, and he encouraged his family and their families to join him where there was plenty for everyone. But as time went on, their numbers grew, and a new pharaoh was afraid that the Israelites would overrun the Egyptians, so he made them slaves to keep them under in a life of cruel servitude. God watched and saw how they were ill-treated and he called on Moses to go to Pharaoh and demand that the people were allowed to go free. Pharaoh refused. Each time he refused. Each time God sent a plague. In fact, ten plagues in all, one after the other, determined to make Pharaoh change his mind. When the tenth plague took all the firstborn, Pharaoh had had enough and he let the people go. God let them, led them through the desert. He sent a pillar of cloud to lead them by day and a pillar of fire to lead them by night. But at the beginning of the chapter, we find God didn't send them in a direct route at first. He told Moses to turn back and camp near Pi-Hahiroth so that Pharaoh would think that the Israelites were wandering around in confusion and he would pursue them. He and his officials had already regretted letting the people go. They said, what have we done? We've let all the slave labour go free. So he had his chariots made ready and his army. 600 of his best chariots with elite drivers, plus many more. And they chased after the Israelites, determined to turn them back. Pharaoh seems to have forgotten that he let the people go because after all the plagues God sent, he realised that he couldn't compete with the God of the Israelites. Sometimes we find God's way of working very confusing. He sent plagues to put pressure on Pharaoh to let his people go. Then he led the people round in circles so that Pharaoh would go after them. But verse 4 gives the answer to why this happened. God says, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. 
God is saying to Pharaoh, don't mess with me, Pharaoh. I read from our study by Darren Spoo. God's purpose in the events of Exodus 14 was to make himself look good. This wasn't the work of ego. God is good. He simply wants us to recognise this truth. God's intent is to drive deep into his people's collective consciousness the fact that he can be trusted even when life seems out to get us. God can use anything to make himself look good, even a stubborn person like Pharaoh or uncertain circumstances. It's critical that as followers of God, we keep our focus on Christ, even as we deal with our critics and our crises. In verse 13 again, we remember, don't be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring today. 365 times we're told it tells us not to be afraid in the Bible. We don't understand the things that happen in our lives. We feel as if we're going around in circles at times and we just can't see a way out of our difficulties. Is it because God is trying to teach us something? Teach us something about himself and how we need to keep near him? Telling us that he is with us and there will be a way out if we're patient and trust in his guidance. Winston Churchill is said to have a plaque on his wall in his study, which says, if you are going through hell, keep going. In other words, don't give in. You can outlive your problems, but it's hard, I know. In most circumstances, the saying, all things pass, is true. When we look back at a difficult time, we realise that somehow we got through it. Well, not somehow. If we're believers, we believe God got us through. A pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire, showing the people that God was standing between them and the enemy. He's there in the miracle of the sea parting as Moses raises his hand, providing a dry path through the walls of water for the Israelites to walk through. He's there in the closing of the waters as the Egyptians followed them into disaster. Skeptics have said that there was no miracle here, that at that point where they were supposed to have crossed, it, the waters were only inches deep. The so people were walking sort of ankle deep in water. The answer to that has been, well then, it's an even greater miracle, because if that was true, God drowned the whole of the Egyptian army and the chariots and horses in only inches of water. Charles Spurgeon, a 19th century pastor and theologian, applied the Red Sea miracle to our lives when he said, the Lord will make a way for you where no foot has been before. That which, like the sea, threatens to drown you shall be a highway for your escape. The study ends even when life seems out to get us, God is intent on saving us. For reflection, the pillar of cloud guided them during the day. At night, they followed the pillar of fire. When the pillar stopped, they were meant to stop. When it moved, they were meant to move. If you are facing a difficult decision and you're feeling confused just now, Perhaps you should pray for clarity. Maybe, maybe God is instructing you to delay the next step or even not to take a step yet. Make your next move only as you get clarity, you get understanding, light switches on in your head and then you know it's time to step out. Sarah spoke about stepping out last Sunday, didn't she? as Peter got out of the boat. But we need to feel that God is with us when we do this. I'm preparing this vlog just before the coronation of our new monarch, King Charles III and his queen, Camilla. 
I pray God's blessing, wisdom and guidance on him. As Christians, we worship the King of Kings, our Saviour Jesus Christ. I pray that you do, so that you may know his blessing and his guidance in your life. If you don't, it's simple. Just ask Jesus to become part of your life. Thank you for listening. God bless you.